Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2020 Formula 2 World Tour Championship. Uh, today we are at the Singapore Marina Bay Circuit and uh, this is around uh, five of the championship so by the end of this one uh, we will be at the halfway point of the season as we start our qualifying lap though a lacy comes out of pits right in front of us and that's going to cost us a lot of time as we uh, get a little bit warped by him and uh, that has uh, yeah had a, a, a negative effect on the start of our qualifying lap and worse still we're on the super soft uh, compounder tires and they really don't last uh, around any circuit let alone one with so many corners I don't know why uh, we're using this tire compound this weekend uh, it is way too soft uh, for this track they will barely last a lap but uh, anyway uh, we'll do our best but uh, yeah that's uh, really uh, thrown away any chance we've had of that we would have had for a decent qualifying position and uh, to make things worse we're not really uh, getting the lap together uh, very nicely and uh, particularly uh, through this hairpin just getting the line just completely wrong into there and uh, just not uh, it's just not coming together for us so uh, we're going to be starting uh, down the back I can already kind of feel it at this point but we'll finish off the lap uh, as best we can another mistake there into the right hander and uh, you can just see that we are just not on the pace at all here so uh, maybe a few more practice laps were in order but uh, even in practice I was feeling alright but as soon as we put these super soft tyres on uh, it was uh, it completely just changed what the car feels like it's just it feels like a different car because uh, the tyres are so soft they're so grippy but uh, by the end of the lap they've already got uh, nothing left really you can see understeer there now so uh, yeah this uh, really is uh, a very strange one I think uh, definitely the wrong tyre compound to be on but uh, you need the pace from these tyres so uh, you know, with everyone else running on these tyres, um, yeah, you need them, but uh, unfortunately just the wrong compound for this weekend, I think, but uh, as we have a bit of a moment, Alessi gets uh, a bit of karma there, and uh, has to check up behind us, but uh, yeah, that was us pushing on for another lap, it didn't work out for us, and uh, that is the end of qualifying. Wind down from the excitement of qualifying, here's a look at your top three, Schumacher, Matsushita, and Antoine Hubert. The grid is set then. So that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow where we'll be live with all the action. And until then, goodbye. So there we have it. We are well down the order in, well, dead last. There's no other way to say it. Uh, so we a lot of work to do uh, in the races, but we'll see uh, what we can come away with. So uh, let's just get into it and uh, get a move on, get, get a good start, overtake some cars and uh, have some fun. Hello and welcome, where it's all eyes on the grid and the final preparations ahead of today's championship race. Located in the heart of Singapore's Marina Bay, this bumpy street circuit is seen as one of the most physically demanding in motorsport. It can be a particularly technical circuit to navigate, one that has proved popular with fans and drivers alike. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's results with a look at the starting grid. Mick Schumacher lines up on pole position and Nobuhara Matsushita completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hubert, Boccalacci, Jordan King and Joe Mazepin, Delatrat, De Vries, Sergio Sete Camera, Eilot, Latifi, Jack Aitken and Calderon, Galeo, Giotto, Alesi and Mahavir Ragnarok. Boschon and Juan Manuel Correa completes the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So here we are in the grid then for the feature race here in Singapore. And uh, as you can see, uh, strategy, uh, the usual super softs to softs. Apparently though it's not much slower uh, to use two sets of soft compound tyres uh, in a two stop. So uh, yeah, that shows how much tyre wear there is and why I think the uh, tyre compounds are uh, just too soft uh, this weekend but uh, that's uh, what uh, we've all been dealt with it's the same for everyone so uh, it'll be an interesting one so let's just get into it as we get ready to go to the vibe red lights and away we go for the uh, feature race here in Singapore and it's a fairly ordinary start a good one uh, for Mahavir Ragunathan as he's going three wide with the row ahead of him as we go to the outside see if we can get a position 
uh, on Ralph Boschum as Ragunathan is really uh, fighting hard here to try and gain those uh, early positions as we uh, try to get past uh, Boschum around the outside not able to do it, Alacy dropping back uh, from the start as he's about to lose the spot to Ragunathan as we have a look up the inside of Boschum we might just squeeze through here finally uh, on the inside as we head on to the back straight and a uh, little check of the front wing but we are just fine and uh, we fly along the back straight and uh, we will get ahead of Boschung as we have a look up the inside of um, uh, Ragunathan and Alacy not able to make any overtakes there but we're going to go up the inside finally there and that's a late move and we only just missed the back of Luca Giotto but we do make the move uh, on the two of them at the same time and uh, that has uh, finally uh, sorted the battle between those two as well uh, with Ragunathan ahead of Alacy but uh, next up for us is the uh, UNI Virtuosi car of Luca Giotto so let's see if we can close up to him uh, in time for the next uh, overtaking opportunity uh, we're not going to get him here into the hairpin that's a very uh, unusual overtaking opportunity but it can be done but uh, this is what I was uh, trying to focus on as we head along the straight uh, no DRS enabled just yet and uh, we won't get close enough but we will down the inside uh, eventually uh, into the left hander that's at the end of the first uh, long straight on the circuit as we run side by side with Giotto and we uh, leave each other plenty of room there as we continue to fight though uh, through this next left hander there's no space on the exit here as we run wide just about avoid contact uh, with the wall the battle with Giotto still going on as we head uh, down towards the next corner and we will make it around the outside uh, just before uh, the, the uh, very narrow part of the circuit and we'll move on uh, to overtake down the inside of Jack Aitken as well and uh, we'll make that move uh, much more easily. So uh, making a steady progress uh, through the field and the next car up ahead uh, is the Arden car of Tatiana Calderon. So let's see if we can make a move on her. Uh, down into the right hander and that's a late move. Very, very fine. But we did just about get ahead uh, of the Colombian and uh, that was a very, uh, very uh, fine and close move there. Uh, but uh, we did manage to get it done. But uh, you can see uh, not too far into this race and these tyres are already uh, incredibly uh, well worn at the right front uh, into the 70s so uh, yeah we are going to swap these out for uh, a harder compound uh, the soft tyres this time and uh, they will carry us to the end of the race hopefully um, I, uh, I do have a history of burning up my tyres in Formula 2 cars so uh, yeah this will be interesting hopefully we'll make it to the end uh, without any uh, catastrophic issues but uh, yeah we'll see but uh, anyway as, uh, as I say that uh, we need to get some heat into these tyres uh, because obviously no tyre blankets in Formula 2 uh, make the outlap very very important you can see weaving uh, along the straight not going to help the tyre wear but uh, the tyre heating is more of a concern at this point we need to uh, get the temperature in so uh, that will help us out uh, just a little bit but uh, yeah we want to try and get an undercut on as many cars as possible uh, and then we can try and uh, conserve the tyres later on uh, in the race uh, if we have to so as we continue on then uh, past the pit lane we're overtaking a bunch of cars that we were not ahead of before and as we try and uh, squeeze through and just about get ahead of Nicholas Latifi we've got Mazepin uh, up ahead and we have a big lose of the back end there but we are ahead and uh, that's brought us up uh, into 14th position and uh, that's only the first uh, lot of pit stops for everyone else here comes uh, the second lot as the rest of the field uh, make their stops a faster snap of the race for us as uh, we are the first to set uh, a lap time on fresh tyres as we go around the outside and just about get through uh, on uh, Jordan King and that brings us up into 8th position we're on reverse grid pole here uh, in Singapore that uh, is the target already reached uh, but we are on slightly older tyres than everyone else now but uh, we'll do uh, the best job we can and uh, that includes uh, trying to make a move on Louis Delatraz down the inside at the end of the straight but we missed the apex and it's a great switch back by Delatraz and he's got that position back immediately what a move there uh, by Louis Delatraz and uh, he uh, did not waste any time there have a look at this uh, on the replay just switch back to the inside so close on the front wing there as well uh, that's a very uh, nice and aggressive switch back little tiny lock up on the way into the corner but that was a textbook little switch back there uh, by Louis Delatraz and uh, that was uh, very very impressive work I've never uh, seen an AI car uh, be able to do that so effectively 
and uh, yeah, that was really uh, great stuff there. And uh, he has held on to the position uh, for now. But uh, as we continue on, we're going to try and make the move again down the inside. Not going to get close enough this time, though, uh, to Louis Dallas And he's going to hold on. But uh, through these next few corners, uh, this is our strongest part of the circuit through here. So uh, we may be able to make an overtake uh, somewhere in this section if we can get close enough to see right on his gearbox, getting a good exit here as we get to the inside line as we head uh, towards this uh, next awkward left and Adelatraz just gives us some room on the inside as we get the move done uh, ahead of the Swiss driver leaving him some space there on the right but uh, we are ahead and uh, up into 7th position Adelatraz down to 8th but now on reverse grid pole as we run wide Adelatraz sneaks back up the inside as we now head up uh, towards the uh, next right hander in the side by side we've got the inside line though and we will just about hold off uh, Louis Delatraz in the car and uh, maintain that position but uh, he is fighting hard uh, is Louis Delatraz and the caution's out now and that is for Sergio Sete Camera and he is out of the race uh, with a mechanical failure unfortunate uh, for him and uh, that brings out uh, the safety car and uh, we only just catch up to the field by the time the safety car goes in but uh, we do just that and it is now uh, only a two lap sprint uh, to the end of the race so let's see what we can do uh, in these uh, final couple of laps uh, the next car up ahead of us uh, is Nikita Mazepin so let's see if we can overtake him for 6th position that is the target uh, for uh, these last 2 laps so uh, here we go then uh, on to the back straight there won't be DRS for the rest of this race so everything will have to be done on uh, pace and in a corner exits we did get a good exit there so we're going to have to try and uh, sit uh, in the slipstream in the second half of the straight as uh, where it's most important but we've got to run now to the outside of Nikita Mazepin uh, through the left hander and we just about uh, get the move done as we will have to run side by side into the next right hander but with the inside line we're able to get through there and uh, make that move uh, but uh, up ahead it's been a great race for Nobuharu Matsushita and he is going to come around the final corner to win the feature race here in Singapore a great drive by him to uh, dominate this race uh, from the front as we uh, come through uh, the final corner to make a pretty nice comeback all the way up into sixth. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. And we cross the line in style as well. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> there we go. So happy with that. A great win then for the Carlin team today. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? Wow. Well, there's no doubt that the race was imparted as soon as the safety car made an appeal. It was so important how the successful team today reacted to this situation. They were decisive and stuck to their strategy, which really helped them take an advantage. As we can see, it's time for the podium. And I can see the Carlin team underneath our commentary box going crazy as their driver walks out. It was a great win, and it means a great deal to this team. So it is Nobuharu Matsushita who takes another race win here. Feature race victories uh, coming his way uh, with a solid bank of uh, 25 points. Uh, second place goes to Anton Hubert with Mick Schumacher in third. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's tape. It's a good result for Juan Manuel Correa, who extends his advantage at the top of the championship. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? Alex, I choose Juan Manuel Correa. Just impressed me in the overtakes maneuver, so well done to him. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Carlin moved up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. All right then, so uh, that is uh, made of the championship very interesting. Just five points separating myself, Schumacher and Masashita uh, after that, but uh, we will get a bit of that back theoretically uh, in the sprint race we will be starting ahead of them at least so uh, things may not be as bad as they seem we did lose a lot of points obviously in that race with the uh, Manchester and Schumacher uh, up on the podium we only managed sixth position but 
uh, yeah, we should be able to uh, increase our buffer in the championship once again uh, in the sprint race. Let's hope so at least, but uh, who knows uh, what uh, will happen. But uh, yeah, uh, other than that though, um, let's see. Uh, through this race, I think we uh, pretty much maximized what we had uh, for most of the race. Obviously starting from the back and uh, mistakes in qualifying uh, obviously were, uh, were not great, but... Uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, from where we started, I think we did a pretty good job. Probably could have been a bit more aggressive on the start and got a few more positions early, but uh, in terms of our uh, overall result, uh, I think we did uh, a decent job to recover. And I don't think we really uh, could have got too much higher up the field uh, in any case. So, uh, yeah, we'll be starting third for the next round, or for the next uh, race, rather, uh, the second race of this round. So, yeah, I can't complain about that. Uh, too much. Here's that move on Louis Delatraz. Uh, really enjoyed this battle actually uh, with Louis and uh, yeah that was a uh, nice uh, sneaky move up the inside there and uh, getting the traction uh, off of that corner uh, was uh, yeah really nice move because it's hard to make an overtake without DRS uh, even in Formula 2 so uh, when you do it uh, feels pretty good but uh, anyway the, uh, that, that first sector for us is a really strong uh, part uh, of the lap or at the first half of the lap I should say for the second half we uh, struggle a little a little bit uh, basically from the hairpin uh, onwards but uh, yeah it uh, works out uh, fairly even uh, overall so I guess that's fine but uh, yeah it's, uh, it's something we need to work on though is that second half of the lap it's uh, not uh, come together for us too well uh, so far but uh, anyway Let's get on to the sprint race and uh, see what we can do there. Preparations on the grid are wrapping up as we brace ourselves for the start of today's big race. Alongside me today, I'm delighted to welcome back to the commentary box the 2012 GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. There looks to be a challenging race ahead of the drivers today, Davide. With that in mind, what are you looking out for today? Well, Alex, I want to see how the drivers at the back of the grid are going to run down. They need to make an impact in the early stages, and they're probably hoping for a bit of luck at the start. We may see some bold maneuvers out there today. So with no strategy to discuss, we go straight uh, to the five red lights. And away we go for the sprint race here in Singapore. It's a great start for us uh, versus Louis Delatraz Mazepin to the inside. It's going to be three wide into the first corner as we try to go through the middle and we'll just about squeeze through there and make the positions and get up into the lead uh, through the first uh, three corners there as Louis Delatraz takes second position from Nikita Mazepin. So I thought Mazepin would get through there as we squeeze Delatraz wide, but uh, he somehow managed to uh, make, maintain that position ahead of Mazepin. Uh, I didn't grab a replay of that, but uh, yeah, that is a great uh, bit of driving there from Delatraz from where he was to hold on to second position uh, with the line we were taking. But uh, anyway, as we continue on, that is the uh, perfect start for us from third up to first. And uh, now we just need to hold on to this. Uh, for the rest uh, of the race. So uh, we'll just try and push away and break the RS and uh, see uh, what we can do uh, from there. But uh, perfect stuff for us. So let's see uh, what happens as we move on. And uh, as you can see, uh, as we uh, continue to race through uh, on lap nine now, and uh, Nikita Mazepin has overtaken the Wiedel race. So uh, the uh, gap was always increasing, but uh, who knows with Mazepin behind us now, uh, maybe that gap uh, will start to decrease. But uh, that doesn't change the objective for us. We just need to uh, run the fastest race uh, that we can and try to minimize mistakes and uh, hold on uh, to our lead uh, for uh, as long as we can. But the safety car is out as there is a mechanical failure for Nicholas Latifi. The other damned car it was camera in the first race that brought out safety car and Latifi in this one. And uh, he will not finish the sprint race here uh, in Singapore. So uh, unfortunate for him. That brings out the safety car. And uh, you can see the gap behind us uh, just shrinking and shrinking as we are limited to the safety car speed. And uh, here comes Mazepin flying along and uh, closing up all of that margin uh, that we had. So, uh, yeah, really frustrating times uh, for us. But uh, 
Not long later, the safety car pulls away uh, from the field, lights out, and away we go for the safety car, and uh, it is time for us to uh, ready up for the restart. So here we go, out of the final corner, we're going to wait for our best moment and punch it there as Mazepin is not quite expecting it, and we will uh, get uh, a small gap to the Russian and uh, hold on. Uh, to the lead as we run deep though and that's going to be costly for us but we will just about uh, hold on but uh, we need to be careful uh, not to let Mazepin uh, or anyone else uh, get past us uh, because our tyres are not in good condition anymore compared to everyone else as we get a world of understeer through there and now Mazepin has got a run but he's just not quite close enough and I think we'll be able to hold him off uh, but uh, yeah we can't uh, make too many mistakes uh, like that so uh, yeah our tyres will come back up to temperature and we'll get a bit more grip than what we've got at the moment but uh, yeah we are not in a good position because uh, our tyres are definitely in worse condition uh, than everyone else at the moment so uh, yeah we just need to uh, do the best we can with what we have but uh, the uh, outlook on this race has just got uh, a whole lot duller but uh, anyway we run wide out of the final corner and that's going to allow Mazepin to uh, make the move to the inside as it goes side by side uh, down towards okay, turn one where later on the brakes uh, pinch in towards the apex a little bit when we just about keep it on the road and maintain the position as uh, Giuliano Alessi retires from uh, the race oh no what a shame uh, for him and uh, he will not finish the sprint race here but uh, as we continue on then uh, through the final a few corners and a huge slide on the exit there and very lucky uh, not to end up in the wall but that's allowed Mazepin through we're going to try and hold the position around the outside we've both run off circuit Mazepin tries to rejoin contact with Louis Delatraz and that sent him off uh, once again damage to his front wing Delatraz takes the lead and that is a big old mistake there for uh, Nikita Mazepin uh, once you're off track it's your responsibility to rejoin safely and Mazepin was not able uh, to do that and uh, as you can see there the result uh, was not good uh, here's our on board and uh, you can see we stayed off circuit until uh, we made sure the track uh, was clear alongside of us and Mazepin uh, not able to do that and uh, damaged his front wing so uh, yeah Mazepin drops down uh, out of the uh, points in this one and uh, pay attention to him, he might need to make a pit stop as well so uh, yeah his day is done more or less as we continue on and try and put pressure on Louis Delatraz uh, for the uh, race lead uh, once again but uh, let's see what we can do here as we uh, try to follow him through the last few corners uh, it's going to be tricky to uh, try and make uh, an overtake here but uh, we, if we can stay close enough uh, we, uh, we, we're aiming for uh, potentially the first corner uh, or uh, at the end of the long straight where the DRS zones are but you can see just struggling to stay close uh, through uh, that narrow twisty section in the final sector and uh, that's allowed Dallas Raz off the hook here uh, we're not close enough as we head down towards the first corner so uh, we're going to have to try and focus uh, on uh, this uh, next opportunity here but again we're just not close enough and Dallas Raz is just about doing enough but uh, here is where we made the move on him uh, in the first race so if we can get a good exit uh, out of this next left hander but uh, it didn't happen so as we continue on uh, we go to the final lap and uh, a bit of a slide that's going to compromise us once again Delatraz is just building a margin as our tyres just have nothing left to give we're trying to push and the tyres just are not taking it and uh, that is uh, another slide of the rear end as uh, we're now actually under pressure uh, from behind so uh, we're not looking ahead and looking back instead as we head on to the final lap Schumacher uh, putting the pressure on he may be on uh, for a very good weekend he got a third position in the first race so he might be on uh, for another podium here as we continue on and uh, move on to uh, the hairpin we're close to Delatraz here so maybe we'll be able to make a move uh, on to uh, the uh, final sector so let's see we're close we go for a look up the inside but we just can't quite get there Delatraz leaves us the room and we may be able to get the drive on the exit but not quite and Delatraz holds on but uh, that has uh, not worked out well for us uh, because now uh, with that little battle Schumacher is going to be right on the back of us as we're really struggling now and uh, we have actually made a bit of contact there with Schumacher he ran into the back of us as we head into the final couple of corners Schumacher's had a problem uh, if you look in the top left he's dropped down and there is the problem a huge loss of the back end smashes into the wall and the caused all kinds of chaos uh, here and Schumacher I think is out of the race and uh, if not he is certainly out of the points here is the uh, contact 
and a crash and the wheel is off uh, for Mick Schumacher and uh, that is a disastrous end to his weekend looking for a podium and uh, found the wall so uh, that is not what he wanted he's on board with uh, Dorian Boccalacci he managed to get through it and uh, the chaos uh, mostly unfolded behind him Guan Yu Zhou now uh, on board with him and oh, he had nowhere to go there with Schumacher spinning that uh, was no good uh, for Guan Yu Zhou and uh, the on board with Anton Hubert and uh, he managed to get through it uh, just fine but uh, yeah a whole bunch of cars uh, involved in this one double Harry Masashita uh, here and uh, will he get no he yeah he just about gets through it maybe a bit of contact but uh, nothing serious there uh, for him Callum Eilat, uh gets a piece of the action as well so uh, yeah a lot of cars uh, affected by this one and uh, Jordan King uh, as well uh, one of them and oh that was a big hit up the back end of Jordan King Ralph Bosham uh, getting involved just about uh, getting through and uh, Tassiana Calderon I believe was the car that ran into the back of uh, Jordan King and bang there's the hit and uh, that is uh, a big old crash uh, in the closing stages but around the final corner we come as Louis Delatraz wins yes that's a podium excellent drive the team have worked especially hard this weekend and this is a fantastic reward and uh, that is a, a P2 for us the driver of the day goes to Ralph Boschel. So another fantastic victory for Carlin today. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? It was all about being in the right place at the right time. If the safety car hadn't come out and bunched everybody up, I think we could have been looking at a very different result today. And there you have it, today's winners. Having raised some of the biggest names in F1 to date, Carlin have once again shown their expertise when it comes to recruiting new talent. No doubt today's winners have a bright future ahead of them. They certainly deserve it after today's performance. So it's another win for the Carlin team here with Louis Delatraz on top. We will finish up in second position here today and as Dorian Boccalacci in third. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It's a good result for Juan Manuel Correa, who extends his advantage at the top of the championship. And so, Driver of the Day then, Davide Valsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? Difficult call, but I'd like to say Ralph Bouchon. He's just so gifted at getting the most out of the tires, and he showed that today. On to the teams then. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. So, uh, with a few penalties at the end there for uh, a couple of drivers after that uh, final incident, uh, the uh, end result got uh, all jumbled up. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we end up coming out of this weekend with a healthy margin uh, once again. So. Uh, at the halfway point of the season now, uh, we are looking in good shape, but uh, yeah, we uh, need to get on top of this track one day. It uh, it will happen eventually, but uh, yeah, a bit of a struggle this time around. Uh, even in the Formula 2 cars, that last sector just didn't ever really work out well for us, and uh, obviously on the final lap, uh, had that uh, bit of a collision there, but uh, yeah, this is a bit of a... Well and truly a race of uh, two halves for us. The first half of the race we were pulling away, we were looking good and uh, we were very, very quick. And then the second half, uh, everyone started catching up. The safety car came out, that bunched up the field. And uh, yeah, we just struggled uh, for uh, pace uh, after that. And uh, you can see there, uh, Mazepin's uh, attempts at uh, getting past and uh, well, not quite uh, managing it on uh, that first attempt, but uh, uh, that came. Uh, very soon as there's the big swapper uh, that was very very lucky uh, for us then not to end up in the wall and uh, all of us going off the road there and uh, there's Mazepin uh, in the foreground there but uh, yeah bit of a chaotic one but uh, yeah it uh, it was an alright race I think I think we uh, did uh, the best we could and uh, come away we come away with P2 and uh, yeah, I think obviously we could have won if uh, there was no safety car, if we drove a little bit better after the safety car, but yeah, I kind of feel a bit bad for Schumacher. We did kind of take him out at the end of the race there, but 
I don't know, we didn't change our lane or anything, he just ran into us and uh, it ended in a big spin but uh, and crash, but uh, oh well, that's uh, how it goes I guess. But uh, anyway, other than that, not a lot uh, left to cover, so I will say thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, goodbye.